there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today in the Holy Week series, it's Wednesday, and the devotion spoke of the alabaster jar versus the 30 silver coins. And so I wanted to do the two of them in a rather vintage kind of style. So I looked up what an alabaster jar might look like. There's a number of them on Google, so you can kind of pick which one you're interested in. And it doesn't really matter for this particular technique. I'm going to be painting with baby wipes. So I only need a general shape. My phone, fortunately, is about the size of what I wanted to make the jar. You could also print it out whatever size you want and use that as a model. And I'm just kind of trying to get general shapes. That's really all I need because I don't know what an alabaster jar is. And when I get to this portion in the Bible, I'm going to pretty much know that that's what story this is referring to. So I'm looking for the general overall shapes and looking to see where the sides come in, where the sides go out, how high up the handle is, etc. And then I created a bunch of rectangles for the coins. So I wanted to make the coins really tiny compared with the alabaster jar. I have no idea what the physical size relationship between them is or not, but I thought the, the meditation in the PDF that's linked in the description down below, meditation for today that talked about that, was really interesting in its juxtaposition of the value of these two things on this particular day. And that, that the negotiations were going on for those th 30 silver coins with Judas and the, the priests while... The, the woman was anointing Jesus for his burial. So just a really interesting combination of disparate elements. So what I've done is taken a couple of different colors of those bottles of P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolors. And I remembered something as I was using these, you'll get to see in a few minutes, a, a fault of these that I wasn't super thrilled with um, because I forgot. Normally, if I remember, if I'm using these on a regular basis, I don't forget. But in this particular case, I did. And the, the feature of these is that when they dry, like once this paint dries, it's dried. There's not really much you can do to move it. And over here on the other side is where I had the issue. On the left, I know it looks like a hot mess. Hold on, it's gonna look beautiful. But here I was started putting some color down and I realized it was darker than I wanted. So I went and got some of the lighter color and I put the lighter color in there and all that time that was drying. So I ended up with these darker areas than I wanted on this particular page. I was kind of thinking of making it just the lighter yellowish color and lo and behold, I had a little more mottling of color than I'd originally planned, but I can still read the words and I'm okay with that. This is not my study Bible. It's just one of my interleaved Bibles. And since I wanted a nice big space to work, that's why I chose to use this one today. But I took my torn little piece of sticky note that I had used to block off the verse and started using it to mask the bottle and the area around the coins and stuff just to give myself a really rough outline because I can just barely see where the the outline is that I drew and you know it's just barely visible underneath all that paint and then once I finished getting the the main gist of all this down there did a quick iron across it now one of the reasons that I tried to do a torn paper for the sentiment down there the sentiment the verse down there was just to keep with the rough idea of this once I was done, I wished I'd used just a regular square sticky note because that looks a little wonky now, but such is life too late now. And then moved on to putting some highlights onto the bottle. So the alabaster jar now has highlights just on one side because I was careful when I applied the color to only put that yellowish color down in that particular area. And I let the right hand side of it sort of fade off into the background colors. The coins, I'm basically, I just left the yellowish color underneath, and now I can go back in with the white pen and create highlights on a bunch of the coins, and then took a little bit of the leftover watercolor that's still in my little bowl and putting just a few lines in there. I'm not detailing them too much because I don't want attention drawn to them in this particular page. I just wanted to create something where you can tell that it's coins. 
and then give it a little shading underneath just so I have a, a base for the whole thing. I did forget at this stage while I had my brush out to put the little hole in the handle on the jar, but I'll get to that at the very end. And then I started the lettering. Now this is one of those places where these particular watercolors, the fact that they dry so permanently is super helpful. And I'll show you a little trick that they do because it's really helpful when you're someone like me who doesn't do the best job of lettering. This is all freehand lettering. How much is Jesus worth? And then I wanted to put the answer, everything. And so when I started doing that, I realized I should have thought a little more carefully. And often I'll take a piece of tracing paper, kind of write out the words so I know how big to make them, so I know that they fit. In this particular case, I got all excited about making my little serifs on my letters. And if you need to know more about typography, I have a typography for Bible journalers class on my website. But here I went adding the answer to the question, everything in here, and it just kind of ran into the bottle, <laughs> the little jar, like, oh no, now what do I do? Well, on top of this paint that doesn't move anywhere, while your white pen is still wet, you can actually wipe it off, which is kind of amazing. It makes it a little bit cloudy because you end up with a little residue of the white paint that's in the pen. But I just took a little bit more of the color that was still in my bowl and tapped on a little bit more of it in that area. Could totally repair that, let it dry and ironed it flat. And then I could go in and put my everything in my handwriting so that that's my answer to the question. He is worth my everything. He's worth all that's in my alabaster jar. That the 30 pieces of silver was a, a pittance compared to what Jesus is worth. And then I went through and added a little extra width to each of my letters so they'd be a little bit bolder on the page. And I finally did get to putting the little handle in the alabaster jar. It's the little things that make me happy sometimes, remembering a little thing like that. So there is my page for today. I hope to see what you are creating for those who are following along with the PDF with all of the devotions in it this week, and I will see you again tomorrow afternoon with another video. Thank you so much, and God bless you.